ooh, that's hot. But of course you can tell that because you're looking at me through a thermal cam. It's a new toy I just got and I wanted to make a quick video to show you what I've been doing with it and its limitations. So without further ado, here's my stupid video. Yeah, so the camera I'm using is a Seek Thermal Compact, uh, 206 by 156 thermal sensor size, 36 degrees field of view. It's got a stated range of 40 degrees Fahrenheit to 660 degrees Fahrenheit, or minus 4 degrees Celsius to 330 degrees Celsius. You may have noticed that the video stops and starts sometimes, and that's just a shutter covering the sensor so that it can recalibrate. I've wanted one of these things for a long time, and I haven't been able to get one because until recently they were all prohibitively expensive in the thousands of dollars range. Uh, but I think recently uh, breakthroughs in terms of the sensor package and uh, the lens technology have really brought them you know, down in price and made them affordable to people like me. One of the things that surprised me was just how this camera viewed objects that were clear or transparent or things that had a reflective surface. Here you can see I've set up a little test with three mugs, one made of clear glass, one made of ceramic, and the other a thermos type mug that has a chamber in the middle. This feature that I'm using right here actually highlights the hottest and coldest areas of the image, which is really handy. You can see here the water's just uh, you know, about 10 degrees below boiling. And uh, if we pour it into the mugs, you can see that right away the ceramic and glass mugs are really easy to see the thermal exchange but the metal mug you can't really tell that it's heating up except for the top and this is partly because of the construction of the cup but also the material that it uses is reflective to infrared light much like regular light. So it's hard for us to get an idea of exactly how hot it is and this becomes a challenge with lots of things. You can see my NASA mug here is actually giving off heat differently between the silkscreen image and the ceramic, which is kind of cool. It's also difficult to sort of understand or get an idea of how materials will react until you look at them through the camera. Here we have a, a matte painted surface, and when we look at it through the thermal cam, it's actually reflective, which was surprising to me. I've found lots of applications for this device in cooking and you know it requires a little bit of um, understanding that what you're looking at is just a surface temperature. Here we're looking at spaghetti sauce and it looks like molten lava. And here you can see the glass top to the pan or the, uh, the pot and it's opaque even though it's completely see-through in visible light. Here I'm looking at some pasta, just trying to get an idea. Here you can see two different pans, a sort of reflective metal stainless steel or, or something pan. And again, it's very difficult to get an idea of how hot it is, but here, a cast iron pan, not only do you get a good idea of how hot it is, but you can actually visualize how the heat is dissipating through the material, which is really interesting. You can see how evenly things go. So on this pan that's hard to see, if you drop in a material, in this case bacon, as soon as some oil hits the pan, it gets very easy to, to sort of get an idea how hot the pan surface is. Yeah, it's been really handy in the kitchen with cooking, although most of the time I'm just fooling around and it doesn't actually give me any useful information. Here this is a frozen lasagna we heat up. And it's kind of confusing because the camera will shift the palette of colors depending on the, dy it dynamically ranges things. So here things appear dark as if they're cold, but they're actually like 70 to 60 degrees Celsius, which is pretty hot. And, you know, upwards to 90 to 100 uh, for the upper end for the other parts of the lasagna. A really important application and the reason I got this this device was for electronics. I have often spent time, you know, putting a piece of uh, electronics to my hand or to my cheek to try and understand how hot something is, and that can be a good way to burn yourself. So I used it here just very briefly to sort of, you know, look at my friend as he was uh, soldering some headers onto a uh, microcontroller board of his. And it's really interesting, you can see that the tip is not very hot, 
but as soon as the solder touches it, it looks very hot, hotter than the rest of the iron. And this has something to do with, you know, materials and how they exhibit infrared differently. So it's not always easy to tell exactly what you're looking at, whether it's the material or its temperature. I thought an interesting experiment would be to take this old 1938 Philco radio I have, that was my grandfather's, and turn it on and see what sort of, you know, things you could see and what sort of temperatures a device like this would give off. It uses vacuum tubes, and of course vacuum tubes need to come to a temperature to actually function. They need to be warm to work. So, I, you know, I let it heat up, and you can kind of get an idea of how things heat up. Here I am taking a look at the top. You can see the hottest part is actually the uh, filament resistor. That's not a tube that's putting off those uh, high temperatures, which is interesting. But it also makes sense, you know, that's partly how resistors work. I thought it would be neat to put it next to a modern piece of technology, in this case my MacBook Air. And you can see that uh, transistors are far more efficient. Hope you enjoyed the short video about my uh, Seek Thermal Compact. If you have any suggestions as to what I should film with it, I'm open to them. I'll for sure add an updated video if I think of anything cool to film with it too. So long.